everyone hope you're all doing good now we are going to do one very small topic about vaginitis so vaginitis is nothing but the infection and inflammation of the vagina first you have to know how will be the normal vaginal secretion will be there okay so if we take normal vaginal secretion this is white color odorless okay if you ask me as such the vagina itself doesn't produce any secretions okay so where is the secretions come from then okay secretions come from the vulval glands then it can come as a transit through the vaginal wall and this will also include your tubal and endometrial fluids okay now let's discuss about the normal flora that is present in the vagina this include both aerobic as well as anaerobic bacteria aerobic bacteria include your yes lactobacilli which is the most important bacilli followed by your streptococcus staphylococcus and even your gardnerella vaginalis okay anaerobic bacteria includes peptococcus pepto streptococcus and then bacterioles okay and another important point about vagina is the normal ph of vagina ranges between 3.8 to 4.5 okay now let's see about the various infections that can happen in vagina okay so there are three important uh, vaginitis conditions i have to discuss with you number 1 is bacterial vaginosis number 2 is trichomoniasis and number 3 is candidiasis okay now let's discuss one by one first one is bacterial vaginosis so bacterial vaginosis is caused by gardi narella vaginalis here the ph will be more than 4.5 and if you see the discharge it will be somewhat frothy foul smelling watery discharge and very thin one okay usually you will not have any pruritus or erythema in this condition okay so your investigation you can do for this condition is saline microscopy in saline microscopy you will be able to see a cell called clouser okay remember this is specific for your gardnerella vaginalis Clue cell is nothing but an epithelial cell that is studded with bacteria. Okay, so let me show a clue cell. So this is a clue cell. Okay, this is how you will be seeing it in microscopy. So this is an epithelial cell. 
and all these growths or bacteria. Okay, so this is again a crucible, a stained crucible. Clear? Right. Now there are so many criteria given to diagnose bacterial vaginosis. First one is your Amsel's criteria. There are four components in this criteria. First one is thin, white, homogeneous discharge. Second one is flu cells on microscopy seen on mid mount. The pH of the vaginal fluid will be more than 4.5 and there will be a release of fishy order on adding alkali. Okay, say 10% potassium hydroxide. Okay, so these are the components of Hansel's criteria. Number one is thin white homogeneous discharge. Number two is clue cells that are seen on microscopy on wet mouth. Number three, the pH will be more than 4.5. And number four, release of fishy odor on addition of an alkali, say 10% potassium hydroxide. And among these four components, even if you get three components out of four, you can give a diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis. Clear? And there is also another score given to diagnose bacterial vaginosis that is Nugent score. Okay? So, Nugent score estimates the relative proportions of bacterial macrophages to give a score okay and this score will be given anywhere from 0 to 10 okay so if the score is less than 4 this is considered normal if the score is between 4 to 6 then this is considered intermediate and then if the score is more than 6 this will be diagnosed as a case of bacterial vaginosis clear Yes. The next criteria is K or Eisen criteria. Okay. So, here we have three grades. Say grade 1 where this is considered to be normal. Okay. Here the lactobacillus predominate. And there is also grade 2, which is the intermediate grade. Here you will have mixed flora with some lactobacilli present, but there will be also your Gordinella or Mobilincus organisms present. Mobilincus is another bacteria that will be causing bacterial vaginosis. Clear? Yes. Next grade is grade 3 of bacterial vaginosis. Okay. Here there will be predominantly Gorgonella or Mobilincus. And yeah, you may even have few of the lactobacilli as well. Okay. Now, these are the three criteria of bacterial vaginosis. Clear? Also, you have to know you can now how to manage bacterial vaginosis. Management can be done by giving metronidazole or clindamycin right next cause of vaginitis we are going to discuss is trichomoniasis the causative organism here is 
trichomoniasis vaginalis here the ph is more than 4.5 you will have a foul smelling yellow frothy discharge and associated other symptoms will include pruritus dysuria as well as dyspareunia okay here you will be able to see a specific feature while doing a perspectum examination that is strawberry cervix okay so the appearance will be just like this where you can compare it with the strawberry okay so the appearance will be just like this where you can compare it with the strawberry so this is the strawberry cervix that is seen in trichomoniasis okay this is somewhat similar to the studded strawberry right and the investigation here is also your saline microscopy you will be able to see a motile trichomoniasis vaginalis organism so this is the trichomoniasis organism and you can even go for a culture bar the media used for culture of trichomoniasis vaginalis is Stuart's culture and remember trichomoniasis vaginalis is a sexually transmitted disease and hence you should also offer partner treatment and the drug of choice for treating trichomoniasis is again metronidazole clear next one is candidiasis so candidiasis is caused by the organism yes candida albicans here the ph is again less than 4.5 okay so this is the only cause of vaginitis where the ph is less than 4.5 here there is no order okay there is no order of the discharge that is produced but on seeing with naked eyes the discharge will be thick and curdy okay so just like this okay so this will be a classical curdy white discharge that is seen in a case of candidiasis other associated symptoms may include pruritus as well as dysuria okay and on examination you will also see erythema present okay and then doing saline microscopy will show you some pseudo hyphae or spores and for culture of candida albicans you will be using yes subarose dextrose agar then here the drug of choice for treating candida albicans is very good it is fluconazole clear so that's all so this is a short discussion of a genitus so until we meet in the next video take care happy learning and bye bye